so in case of reptiles the respiratory organ is the lungs so in case of reptiles respiration takes place with the help of the lungs so lungs is the respiratory organ in case of reptiles so the first point about this system all reptiles breathe through their lungs because lungs is the only respiratory organ in case of reptiles so all reptiles can breathe through their lungs the reptile lungs has a much greater surface area for the exchange of gases than the lungs of amphibians as compared to the amphibians the surface area for the gaseous exchange for the exchange of o2 and co2 for the exchange of oxygen carbon dioxide as compared to the amphibians the reptiles have much greater surface area the respiratory tract includes external nares nasal chamber internus glottis larynx trachea and bronchi these are the different parts of the respiratory tract out of that externus are present or open on snout externus is the external opening which is found on the snout and open through nasal chamber while internus opens into the buccal cavity so externus opens externally on the snout while internus open into the buccal cavity larynx leads into a long cylindrical tube that is called as trachea the larynx is a part which is found behind the glottis or towards the posterior side of the glottis there is having a particular bulging area that is called as larynx and this larynx lead, lead into a long cylindrical tube that is called as trachea long cylindrical tube that is called as trachea the posterior end of trachea bifurcates into two tubes when we see the posterior part of this trachea that is trachea posteriorly bifurcates into two very small narrow tubes that is called as bronchi that is called as left and right bronchi trachea when it goes toward the posterior side bifurcates into two small tubes that is called as bronchi which is having right and left bronchi then each bronchus enters enters the lungs of its side respective side respective lungs then each bronchi enters into the lungs of its side and these lungs are elongated fusiform thin walled elastic hollow sac of orange color so lungs are elongated fusiform thin walled elastic orange color is a organ the inner surface of lung wall raised into a network of delicate ridges which is also called as septa so when we see the inner surface of this lungs we can found there is having the septa and this septa includes small air sacs or alveoli this septa encloses air sacs septa encloses air sacs or which is also called as alveoli in that septa there is having alveoli where there the gases section takes place so here is the again a diagram of respiratory tract of reptiles there is having the glottis then glottis leads into larynx larynx leads to into a tube that is called as trachea trachea bifurcates into two part that is called as two branches two small tube that is called as bronchus then this bronchus leads into the lungs so again there are having some information about the lungs of reptiles many reptile lungs have little sacs called as alveoli and across which gas is exchanged so in case of alveoli alveoli that is called as air sacs in that air sacs the gases exchange takes place 
This makes their lungs much more efficient than those of amphibians. Lungs ventilation is done differently in each main reptile group. So different type of different type of ventilation process is found in different groups of reptiles. Like that in squamata. Squamates that is the scaled reptiles such as lizard and snakes. In case of lizard and snakes, the lungs are ventilated almost exclusively by the muscle of chest wall. So chest wall muscles take part in ventilation in case of lizard and snakes. A few lizard species use their throat muscles to gulp air in a process called buccal pumping. So in case of some lizards, some lizards, buccal pumping is a particular process which is found at the time of respiration. When at the time of buccal pumping, when its mouth is full of air, the lizard will push the air down into the lungs. Whenever the mouth is full of with the air, the lizard push their air down into the lungs. At that time, they can close their nostrils and the glot glottis are opened. So automatically, due to the pressure exerted in the mouth cavity, the, the air or the gas is forced towards the lungs for the gaseous exchange, for the O2CO2 exchange. And exact reverse process takes place at the time of expiration. In case of crocodiles, so crocodiles actually have muscular diaphragm that is similar to the mammalian diaphragm. So in case of crocodile, there is a diaphragm and that diaphragm can take part in the respiration. Then most turtle shells are rigid and do not allow for the type of movement that other amniotes used to breathe. So in case of turtle, there is having hard shell covering and this is uh, there is no elasticity found in that, in that cell. So there is having different type of ventilation process. Some turtles have a sheet of muscles that surrounds their lungs. So in case of some turtle, there is having sheet of muscle which surround the, surround the lungs and when it contacts, the turtle can exchange, exchange or can inhale. That is, in case of turtle, there is having particular sheet of muscle which surround the lungs and when that sheet can contract, it contracts, the turtle can exhale or expel the air from the body. So when at rest, the turtle can pull its limbs into shell to force air out of its lungs. So at the time of resting, the turtle can pull their limbs into the shell and which can also use pull to force air out from the lungs. Crocodiles have evolved bony secondary plate. In case of crocodile, there is having a secondary palate that allows secondary palate that allows them to continue breathing while remaining submerged. Whenever the crocodiles is found in submerged condition in the water, at that time they can there is having a secondary palate, and with the help of the secondary palate, they can allow continue breathing. What happens at in case of snakes? Snakes have a extended trachea. We know that elongated snakes having the extended trachea that helps them breathe while swallowing. They can also breathe due, at the time of swallowing due to the extended trachea. Their tracheal extension sticks out like a fleshy straw, and this allows this animal to swallow large prey without suffocation. So. This extended trachea can also useful the continuous breathing at the time of swallowing the prey. The anterior part of each lung is more circulated and more vascularized. So anterior part of the lung is more vascularized. Vascularized means having the connection with the blood vessels. So many capillaries of blood vessels are found around the anterior side, anterior part of the lungs and due to which the gaseous large amount of gases exchange here 
in the anterior part so the anterior part of lung is more respiratory than posterior part anterior part of the lung is more respiratory than the posterior part and posterior part of lung is considered as a reservoir posterior part of the lungs is considered as a reservoir for the residual air so the residual air residual air is stored in this posterior part so called as a or considered as a reservoir so these are this is all about the respiratory organ respiratory tract and respiration which is found or which takes place in the reptiles